Our service at St. James is meant to be shared, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. Hi, I'm Reverend Cindy Voorhees, the priest at St. James Newport Beach. Every week we come together to worship God, where we bridge our liturgical tradition in word and sacrament with a contemporary message and creative music. And we offer relevant education programs and service projects to help you grow in your spiritual journey. We hope today's service is something you will experience personally and enjoy the love and energy of our community. If you're watching this service online, please consider a generous donation to St. James because in many ways, a virtual production costs more than a live service. We constantly invest in the latest technology to bring this quality broadcast to you. Whether live or virtual, your contribution will support our vision and make a difference in reaching more people who need our message more than ever. We have many platforms for you to choose from at the bottom of your screen or on our website at stjamesnewport.org. God bless you and thank you for joining us at St. James.
Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to hear our cross, to bear our cross, and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments which I have written for their instruction. So Moses went up, set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain, to the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you today. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain, in sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights.
A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father. When that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on that holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this, as to the lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will. But men and women, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Thanks. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days after Peter had acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning we come in at the apex of Epiphany. Epiphany, the manifestation of Jesus, our Christmas season, leads us into Epiphany, where we have stars and doves and words from heaven and John the Baptist and the Sermon on the Mount. And now we come to the end of of this manifestation great light period. And Jesus is transfigured on the mountain with his disciples. Now remember that up until now, the disciples are kind of just understanding him as a great teacher, a healer, someone that people are starting to pay attention to. He's challenging the authorities, but he's basically, you know, been announced as the Messiah, but not truly truly in their hearts, has he been really transfigured. So they're up on this mountain, and Jesus has this moment where you've got Elijah and Moses on each side of him, and he is completely drenched in light, the heavens part, and God announces that he is his beloved son once again, but this time the announcement is on the majesty, the king of kings. This is where there's no denying to his disciples that things have been transformed. This is where we end Epiphany, we enter into a Lenten season, or where we remember this light, we celebrate this light, but we know we need now to journey to the cross. Jesus ends this passage with, he has to go and die and be resurrected. Tell no one the messianic secret. Now, this is so important that it's in the three gospels, synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So apparently to the early church, this was a transforming moment, no pun intended. That it was so important all three at different decades wrote this in, for everyone to remember, you'll see the, the early church trying to show the transformation from Jesus, the teacher, the rabbi, to the Son of God. Now, if we look at words that start with trans, the Latin word for going forth, moving forward, what are some of the words that come to mind? I already used a couple of them. Can you shout out a couple? I'm going to list them on the screen. Trans. Transcendental? Of course. I'm thinking transfer, but okay, yeah. And another one? Can you spell that, Kent? Transcendental? Transfer? Transfer? Transport? Oh. Now, I wasn't thinking church people here, Kent. Transubstantiation. What else have we got? Transgender. Good one. What? Transmission. I was thinking really simple here. Transmission. He's on trans. Oh, he's got on. Look at that. Look at that. We got technology going here. Anywhere? Transition. Right? That's a good one. Transition. Transubstantiation. Just do, everyone knows what that means. Okay, anything else? Like. Transistor, good one. Okay, we're running out of space. Trans, right? Transition, transfer, going forth, changing into. 
Jesus, we need to remember this season of this manifestation, the incarnation, God in the flesh is born, Christmas Day, and we transition during Epiphany to the transfiguration, the majesty of the king. But not the king we think. The king of creation, the word that began before anything. And when we enter into Lent, the season of darkness, most of the people I've been talking to, they don't want Lent. We're going to, you know, take all the jewelry away, all the flowers. We're going to drape this in like kind of an ash color. We don't want to face this, especially this Lent. I've been talking to people, and they don't want Lent. They don't want Good Friday. We've had enough. But in order to be transformed, I'm going to be so obnoxious this morning. In order to be transformed into Christ-like people, we're going through the valley because that's what life gives us. And Peter immediately wants to stay on the mountain. In our gospel, he goes, Lord, let me build you three dwellings, one for Elijah, one for Moses, one for you. Let me go to Ikea. I'll set, I'll set up a great apartment for you. I don't want to go down the mountain. I want to stay up into that glory and have that vision of light, and everything's good, and everything's wonderful. But Jesus says, no, no, we got, we got to go down the mountain. Can't separate the majesty from the valley, because we're going to all have them, and sometimes they're very brief, and sometimes they're very long. But you're separating the divine from the secular, but it's one when we can start seeing our Christ, our manifestation, when we're doing the laundry, you've arrived. Because all of it matters. Every second of the day, all of it matters. We shouldn't come here Sunday morning and then, oh, we're going out. No, when we're doing the laundry, when we're in the grocery store, when you're at work, what you're play when you're jogging, when you're petting your dog and looking into that dog's eyes. That's the manifestation of creation of God. So I invite you to come into this Lenten season and not to avoid it because it makes us appreciate Easter. The church gives you 40 days to kind of work out some of this crud that we've got. And God only knows if you don't, the world does. We have a war in Ukraine. And let me tell you, when you're walking the streets of Arapin or Bucha like I did, you smell war, you smell it. You feel it. You imagine tanks coming down the street, down Newport Boulevard. With the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, people need us more than ever. They need the divine manifestation, the majesty of Christ. So during these 40 days, if we take off from here, let's celebrate the heck. This is our, like, hybrid. We have Shrove Tuesday today, pancakes. We're doing waffles. And you have Mardi Gras, which I've already been told is wrong to have fried chicken and waffles. But we're doing a hybrid today because James here has promised, James has promised to do a real Mardi Gras meal next year. But now let's celebrate that manifestation, the glory of God, knowing that we are going to go out those doors and face some of the valleys. Peter wants to hang out at the mountain, but he knows he's got to get down. Jesus is telling him, yeah, you guys, don't tell anyone because you have a lot to learn. You have a lot to learn before I turn you loose on the world. And I think that's part of our thing. We, we don't want to go out into the world. Peter wants to stay up on the high mountain. And remember, these are all fulfillments of Scripture. This is Moses up on the mountain getting the law, the Ten Commandments on the mountain. He's, you know, kind of like the Old Testament. And the prophets of old carry on the word. So it's very significant, of course, Moses and Elijah in the transfiguration, right? Jesus is fulfilling 
the law, and the prophecy. Now, the early church knew what it was doing. Everything is to drive a point home. This is the guy. This is the guy we've been waiting for. He's the guy with a male body, with a female soul, who will change the world. Now, people talk about the de decline of the church. No. People need Christ more than ever. And the church needs to manifest Christ more. Right? We do. It's just a remarkable thing this morning to think about what we can do out in that world and let you remind you how much you have been doing ministry. Sometimes you don't realize it, but just let's take Ukraine. Someone here adopted a family into their home. Someone here gave a car to a family. You people did first aid kits, sent them to Ukraine, where I got to see them. A family here is sponsoring a family to come to the United States. See, just one small act ricochets around and manifests the divine. You too can do all that and more as you shine brightly your faces, the face of Christ today. Amen. Now let us please stand and proclaim the mystery of our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, <clears throat> who suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, we ask for your presence as we pray our petitions for the coming week, that we may be strengthened to help transform the world as Christ did. Bless Reverend Cindy and all the staff and team leaders at St. James, along with Church Universal. We thank you for our congregation as we embark on our Lenten journey, looking for illumination on our road, road towards Easter. For this, let us pray to our God. Help those who are suffering from the war in the Ukraine. Protect the innocent as they survive the devastation through no fault of their own. We pray especially for the people of Turkey and Syria to find courage to survive in such dire circumstances after the recent earthquakes. For this, let us pray to our God. We humbly pray that you may bestow wisdom and guidance on our national leaders. 
as they settle into the new Congress. May they all work together for the common good of our country. For this, let us pray to our God. Let us be kind and patient with those less fortunate than us. Give resolution to the life troubles of the homeless, the disabled, the lonely, and the hungry. Bestow compassion on all those who struggle with physical and mental challenges. We pray especially for members of our own congregation. Let us pray to our God. We remember all those who have reached the gates of a larger life. May they bask in your love and eternal glory. For this, let us pray to our God. <clears throat> Friend of Moses, strength of Elijah, you go with your people and give them your spirit. May the child of your heart transfigure the mortal world that love may know no bounds. Through Jesus Christ, the beloved one. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Hey, can you do a little bit of a deliverance for me? (laughs) 
Okay, just had to do that. Welcome to St. James. Welcome to our equally wonderful virtual congregation. Uh, we would like to give you a gift if this is your first time visiting here. Our acolytes in Tutu, well, sort of, are ready to give you a mug and a kiss. Any new people here? Okay, be brave. Hold up your hand. I know we got some back here, right? Dr. Hanan, right there. Right. Here we go. Uh, you have officially been mugged and kissed by St. James, uh, Newport Beach. Some more back here, way back. One isn't going to cut it. We have more in the other room if we want to grab them. Okay, we will get to you. Just keep your hand <laughs> through the whole service. Keep it up. Oh, we got some more back here. Welcome to St. James. There is an information card in the front of the pew. If you fill that out and pop it in the offering plate, we can put you on our uh, very brisk mailing list. We won't kill you with email. Um, after the uh, service, our chef Patrick and um, yeah, Joe are back there making fried chicken and waffles. We have fruit. We have great stuff. Please join us. It'll be lots of fun. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Ya Yakub. Hey, I did it. And for all of you musicians making this great mark, thank you for taking the helm. Right? Please note that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We'll have a very meditative service uh, at noon in the chapel. At 7 p.m., a beautiful service with healing bowls and cellists at 7 p.m. The Lenten theme this year um, is illumination. We got everyone? There's more in the... We got it? Okay. Um, the theme is illumination. We want to look at Lent as a time to be awakened from our COVID slumber, um, but also illuminate the Word of God. So we have a trifecta for you. We have three options. We have the Illuminated Life book. Can I have that book if I said my right? Back at the um, usher's table, this is a wonderful, wonderful meditative book that uh, we will be discussing on Mondays at 10 p.m. via Zoom. And what you need to do is contact the church office and get the link and uh, to be able to attend because we don't want to make this so that everyone could come in and crash your party, right? So this is wonderful. be led by Patsy Wagner and Michelle Falk. So we want to make sure that you sign up right away. It starts this next Monday, the 27th, okay? The second thing we have, every Friday in March at 5 o'clock, we will be doing the Stations of the Cross, <clears throat> starting here with Station 1, going around the campus. Takes about 25 minutes, and then the group will decide where they'd like to go for fish tacos. Lots around here, fish tacos. Third, we'll have ribbons that you can write your prayers on, and you tie them on the gate, and we will invite the community by having ribbons out front the gate to write their prayers for a Lenten prayer gate. So there's your trifecta for Lent. I hope you join in, one or all. Um, social media class is March 5th. Just so if you want to kind of brush up or understand how to do all kinds of things on your phone with social media, our social media evangelist, Alex, where are you? Alex is right here. She will be in the Great Hall on March 5th after the service to help you. You might be able to catch her today, too. Um, and Acolyte Escape Room, March 5th. If you're an Acolyte, we're taking the Acolytes to an escape room in Irvine. Now, if you don't know what an escape room is, you're old. <laughs> Look it up on the internet. It's fun. OK, so this, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what one was either. But, um, this. Um, this week and the last week have been extremely busy, of course, getting ready for Lent, Mardi Gras, Ash Wednesday. But I did go to the mayor's dinner and was uh, surprised to be sitting right up front. Uh, but it just shows you St. James is right up front in this community. Um, it was a really uh, great dinner, great time. But I want you to know that you were represented. And it was a really good time to meet a lot of politicians. But more importantly, for people to come up and say all the good things that St. James is doing and that they're so glad we're in the neighborhood. God bless you as you give to this amazing ministry.
starry crown down by the riverside. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory, in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you 
joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim <clears throat> the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Eat this as my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, and your Holy Spirit, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, to whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you have much faith and you who have little. You have been here often and you have not been here long. You have tried to follow and you who have failed. But come because it is the Lord who invites you. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Can I just give a quick shout out for all who made today possible? And um, one particular, you'll see in the Great Hall also, Ariel, thank you so much. Where are you? <laughs> Please stand. Let us pray on page 16. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, so that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us at Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, be manifested in you, that your lives may be a light to the world and a blessing to God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be among you and be with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thank you. Yeah.